What's going on, everybody? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Basement Poetry Podcast. This is the podcast where we get to sit back, relax, and talk about poetry. Today, the poem will be by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And if you've been listening to my previous episodes, Edna St. Vincent Millay was actually the first poet that I read on the Basement Poetry Podcast. I read her poem, Love is Not All, It is Not Meat Nor Drink, you know, and so on and so forth. She obviously holds a special place in my heart as far as poetry goes, and I am excited to read another one of her poems that I think is just amazing. Um, This poem is called, I Being Born a Woman and Distressed. And it is sonnet XLI. If you know Roman numerals, then you know what XLI means. But at the moment, I do not know it off the top of my head. And so I think it's like, yeah, I don't know what L is. I think it's like, I, yeah, I have no idea. Anyways, I'm going to get into the poem now. And so this is how it goes. I, being born a woman and distressed by all the needs and notions of my kind, am urged by your propinquity to find your person fair and feel a certain zest to bear your body's weight upon my breast. So subtly is the fume of life designed to clarify the pulse and cloud the mind and leave me once again undone, possessed. Think not for this, however, the poor treason of my stout blood against my staggering brain. I shall remember you with love or season my scorn with pity. Let me make it plain. I find this frenzy insufficient reason for conversation when we meet again. So that was I Being Born a Woman and Distressed by Edna St. Vincent Millay. And that poem is absolutely amazing. One reason why I say it's amazing is because Edna St. Vincent Millay is a savage. Let's just start there. She was just like, look, I don't got time to play with you. This ain't about love. Look, this is just how nature moves. And I don't even, we don't even have to talk again after this moment. So let's not do all that extra stuff. And I'm like, yo, she was a savage before there was such a thing as a savage or a player or whatever, right? This is what I'm talking about. She, so I'm actually going to deem this Saturday, Savage Saturday. And I actually don't know if this is going to drop on Saturday or Sunday, but I'm recording it on Saturday. So that is what it is. So, yeah, this poem is amazing, not just because she was, you know, really talking really straight up with this guy. It's funny because when I read this poem, I actually see it as kind of like if you guys have ever been in like a um, office setting where, you know, you got to send emails back and forth. That's kind of what this poem reminds me of. It's like imagine being in the office and your friend makes you mad or not your friend, your boss makes you mad, you can't just be like, send them an email back and say like, forget you, like, F you, da da da. You gotta say it with a certain kind of like, you gotta use the foo-foo language is what I'm saying. And she uses words like propinquity. If you have to tell somebody that they're a one night stand and you use the word propinquity, then you have officially won. There's nothing he can say to that. This is what I'm saying. This is why I said she's a savage. Like, that is just ridiculous. And so, you guys can kind of see what I think this poem is talking about. I think, you know, she had a one-night stand, or is about to have a one-night stand with um, with someone. And she's kind of just saying, like, look, this is mostly because I am just desiring this at this moment. And I love how she details that desire 
starting with being born a woman and distressed by all the needs and notions of my kind and uses what she uses words like urged by your propinquity you know the word urge gives it kind of a urgency of course um yeah and the certain zest to bear your body's weight upon my breast and you know when she says so subtly is the fume of life designed what I'm hearing there is that this is just how life is designed but it's such a subtle thing that kind of happens kind of behind the scenes and the next line after that is to clarify the pulse and cloud the mind and so the pulse rises but then the thought process and the clarification of the mind and what you really you know might want you know it's kind of out the window and anyone who's ever felt you know this level of desire can understand the how that level of rationality kind of is just like whoop, it's gone <laughs> so I think you know she's really laying that out perfect and you know make sure you're looking in the show notes because a transcription of the poem will be there and I want to pay attention to line hold on line 11 I want to pay attention to line 11 line 11 and it goes into line 12 a little bit but it says I shall remember you with love or season my scorn with pity and the reason I point that line out is because one thing in poetry that I'm super aware of especially like when if I write poetry or if I read poetry is line breaks and how you end a line can have so much meaning to it and here she ends the line with the word season and if you read it together it says or season my scorn with pity but if you don't read that together you can read the line as I shall remember you with love or season and so there is this level there's this element where she's saying like I might remember this time with love or I might just say this was just a season it's gonna pass so there's that almost chance that you know she might be able to fall in love we don't really know um but it could just be a season and it'll move on but it you kind of can get lost that meaning right there could kind of get lost in the rest of the poem if you read it by like punctuation or whatever but I always make a point to pay attention to line breaks I think line breaks hold so much meaning in them and then the last iconic lines where she really just cements her savagery and says let me make it plain I find this frenzy insufficient reason for conversation when we meet again man I feel hurt for this dude and you know hopefully his feelings weren't hurt too bad I don't know who this was about nor would I ever want to be him so that is the poem for today I hope you guys enjoyed that make sure you look in the show notes for the poem and a link to Edna St. Vincent Millay's bio I also recommend her other poem if you want to see the poem that I read in the first episode Love Is Not All which is another beautiful poem I definitely recommend you go listen to that podcast and look her up so thank you guys for tuning in to the Basement Poetry Podcast it's always a wonderful time for me to connect with you guys and this will be up on YouTube I found a way to get my episodes up on YouTube so for all you people who don't have Spotify or don't have Apple Podcasts or don't have all the other podcast streaming sites we are up on YouTube so there's no excuses now everyone has a place in this thing we call poetry thanks for tuning in Thank you.